Hello everybody, welcome to Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons PH and we are still at Strategic Cost Management. This is our lesson on cost concepts, classifications, and cost behavior. And this is version 2.0 because this is now on a managerial emphasis. At the end of the video, you should be able to explain cost accounting and the importance of cost information, differentiate manufacturing and non-manufacturing costs, product and period costs, direct and indirect costs, and controllable and non-controllable costs. Describe what a relevant range is and distinguish three cost behaviors, fix, variable, and mix. Apply separation of fix of mixed costs, I'm sorry, and using different methods in managerial planning and controlling. And describe all other relevant costs that affect managerial planning, controlling, and decision making. This is your management accounting trainer, Kevin Troy M. Chua. Before anything else, please like, share, and subscribe to Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons PH and hit the notification bell button. Comment down your questions, suggestions, and reactions. Thank you very much for trusting Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons PH as your online learning partner. And gusto ko po magpasalamat sa lahat ng patuloy na nagtitiwala in using my video lessons to help you in your online learning at this time of the COVID-19 pandemic. So, marami marami salamat po. And our featured subscriber for this session is Ms. Erica Joyce Nuestro, also from the Polytechnic University of the Philippines, Manila. If you want to be featured as one of our featured subscribers in one of my videos, you can send me your photo uh, of you using Search Us Accounting Lessons PH. And uh, nakarating po sa akin <laughs> na meron daw po tayong Chuanatics Fans Club sa PUP Manila. <laughs> Ang president daw po ng BSA chapter ay itong si Eka Nuestro. <laughs> so kung gusto niyo daw po sumali, siya daw po ang kukontakin nyo. And sa BSMA naman daw po na chapter si Trixie Gabriela. <laughs> okay, so thank you very much po. Sana nare-receive ko pong love and support from all of you. And Sir Chua loves you so much too. Maraming salamat po. Okay, so our previous lesson was about the introduction to strategic cost management and management accounting. So, uh, we introduced to you kung ano po ba ang gamit ng cost accounting in cost management. So, basically, you're using cost information and decision making in supporting the strategic position of the entity. So, basically, yun po yung strategy, no? yung strategic position, yung strategic na nating sinasabi in applying those uh, cost information in strategic management. And also, you have been opened and introduced to the wonderful world of management accounting. Okay, so we're now ready for another lesson and I hope that you will be with me today until the end of this session. Okay, let's first discuss what cost is. Cost reflects the amount of resources sacrificed in order for the company to achieve a certain objective such as creation of goods or rendering of services in order to earn revenues. The basic presumption that we have in cost is that it is a sacrifice that you need to do in order for the company to earn revenues. Okay, So we have three examples here. First example. A service provider needs to purchase supplies and materials and pay salaries to employees in order to render service and earn revenue. So, may mga pagkakagastusan din talaga siya na katapat, no? Para siya ay makapag-earn po ng revenue. And then also, we have a merchandiser has to first purchase the goods that they need to sell in order to earn revenue. So, nagkakaroon po tayo ng tinatawag nating uh, uh, cost of goods sold, di ba? Sa merchandising, no? So, yung cost of goods sold po kasing yun, that represents the amount of inventory na binili mo muna in order for you na magkaroon ng inventory na maibibenta mo. So, nag-sacrifice ka pa din muna, di ba? Bago ka makabenta. And on the side of the manufacturer naman po is you spend for materials, you pay for your laborers and other factory overhead so that you may be able to transform your raw materials into finished goods and eventually bibenta mo yung mga finished goods na yun in order for you to earn revenue. As uh, what you can see in these three examples, isa lang naman ang pinatutungkulan, hindi ba? Earning revenues and basically at the end point of all of it is uh, earning profit, di ba? But what is the starting point in all of those? Kailangan mo talaga ng sacrifice. At yung sacrifice na yun ay tinatawag nating cost. Okay. So now, um, you have already been introduced to cost accounting and you really had actually 
a separate uh, discussion on that last semester. It's a one whole subject, which is cost accounting and control. Now let's integrate your learning of cost accounting now on a managerial emphasis. No? So, gamitin po natin yung knowledge natin ng cost accounting, cost management, on paano po ba tayo magiging magaling na manager. Okay. Cost information coming from cost accounting is a vital tool in order for managers to plan and control operations effectively. Okay? Pansin niyo pong mabuti, kailangan daw po natin ng cost accounting information to plan and control operations effectively. Napakahalaga po talaga ng cost accounting information. This stresses the need for timely and relevant cost information. As what I've told you, di ba, in the previous session, we need timely and relevant accounting information that will be able to aid management in decision making. Kasama po doon ang napakahalagang cost information na nade-generate natin sa cost accounting that will help managers in their planning, controlling, and decision making. Okay, let's discuss the first point here. Cost analysis, cost management, and cost control should come after making cost information available. Basta meron na pong cost information na available, ang isang manager po talaga ay consistently hindi po sila nagiging complacent in a sense na parang hindi na nga po sila nagpapahinga after those cost information is available, ina-analyze, mina-manage, at uh, kinokontrol natin. No? Uh, hindi po tayo dapat nagiging complacent na, okay, I think it's doing well, so let's just continue doing this. That's fine, but uh, a good manager will really be uh, hands-on no? uh, in the everyday operations of the entity. And one thing na makakatulong po dun sa mga managers na yon sa pag analyze ng operations is your cost accounting information. Techniques like budgeting and forecasting helps the entity plan the future and subsequently control operations through performance evaluation and variance analysis when actual data becomes available. So, mapapag-aralan po kasi natin sa subject na to yung ating pong mga controlling na techniques like performance evaluation and variance analysis na i-apply po natin dun sa mga naging planning functions ng company katulad po ng budgeting and forecasting bakit, bakit ka ba magbabudget? kasi yung budget na yun is uh, your plan, di ba? That's actually your plan. And you will be doing a control function on it because you will be doing some variance analysis and performance evaluation once meron na po tayong actual data. No? So, kung makikita nyo po dito that it's very important that the entity or the entity's managers rather plans very well through budgeting and forecasting pero hindi po siya natatapos sa pagpaplano. At the end of everything, kapag ka po meron ng actual data available, then variance analysis and performance evaluation will be done. And masasagot yung tanong na, were we able to achieve what we are achieving? Or were we able to achieve our targets and objectives? Okay? So, on a managerial emphasis, napakahalaga din nung lalabas natin cost information so that it will be used in planning, controlling, decision-making, and performance evaluation at the end of it all. Okay? Next, a manager would have to think of ways in order to reduce costs and other expenses on the standpoint of increasing profits. Yan po yung lagi nating pinag-uusapan na by default, ang gusto po talaga nating mangyari is mababa lang yung cost ng company, di ba? Kasi pag mababa lang yung cost ng company, ano nangyayari? Siyempre yung kinikita ng company, mas mas uh, tumataas, di ba? But, I really want to emphasize here is that meron tayong tinatawag dito na strategically, however, <laughs> ganun siya, no? Increases or decreases in cost should support the strategic positioning of the entity. Basically, referring on how to achieve competitive advantage. Yan po yung diniscuss natin last week, ba? For example, um, gusto nilang maging cost leader. So, kung gusto nila maging cost leader, ano ang kanilang dapat gawin? Mag-lower daw ng cost para sila ang lower prices in the market. E paano naman kung gusto nila ang product differentiation? Doon natin niya allow na, ah, baka okay lang na mag-increase tayo ng konti ng cost. Kung ito ang magpapa-differentiate, kung ito ang magiging unique ang product natin. No? So, yun yung sinasabi natin na ang ating pong increase or decrease in cost should support the strategic position 
the strategic placement of an entity which is referring to how can they achieve competitive advantage. Okay? Again, ang default, lower cost, much better. But if higher cost would support the strategic position of the company, that's also fine. Okay? Next, on a strategic management standpoint, management functions, cost management, planning, and decision making should be in line with the entity's vision, mission, goals, and objectives. Balik tayo sa concepts ng strategic management. Okay. Pag sinabi pong vision, that is what the entity looks at themselves in the future. To be the leading ice cream manufacturing company in the Philippines. Ganon. Or, uh, basta ganon, no? yun, yun yung nakikita nila no? sa sarili nila. Pag sinabi naman pong mission, to be able to provide great, great tasting ice cream that would bring smiles to Filipino people. Pag sinabi naman pong mission, ano ba yung gagawin nilang mission para ma-achieve yung gusto nilang mangyaring vision? Ganon po kasi yung mission. Tapos, coming from that vision and mission, you will do your goals and objectives. Now, hindi lang po basta uh, statements na nakapublish sa company website or nakapaskil sa dingding ng mga company yung vision and mission. Yan po ay nagsosoporta at ating nagiging framework, nagiging skeleton ng buong operations ng company. If you want to become the leading ice cream manufacturing company in the Philippines, what should you do? And in doing your mission of bringing smiles to the Filipino people through your ice cream, what should you do? Kasama po ang pagkoconsider mo niyan kapag ka ikaw po ay gagamit na ng cost information, management functions, cost management, planning, and decision making. No? Uunti-untiin mo na yung strategies mo galing don sa vision, mission, goals and objectives mo. And ano po yung isang tool na makakatulong sa'yo on a strategic management standpoint na gagamitan mo ng cost information? Eh di syempre, strategic cost management. Okay? May relationship po lahat ng business subjects kung tutuusin. No? It's just that baka hindi natin na-highlight ng maayos. Okay? Next po. Cost management and control is a highly important factor in achieving, maintaining, and growing the entity's profitability. Yan naman po yung paulit-ulit nating sinasabi that uh, you can use cost information to, for you to be able to do cost management and control. Diba? And uh, yan po ay gagamitin mo upang mag-grow ang company. No? Siyempre sa una, profitability, tas unti-unti yung talagang ta-targetin mo na rin yung paglaki ng company. And then lastly, when an entity is continuously profitable, value continuously increases, which goes back to the importance of the alignment of cost control with the entity's vision and mission. A manager should always put cost management in mind on a strategic standpoint. So, hindi na lang po tayo puro cost management, cost management, cost control, cost control. Kailangan po ang isang manager ay marunong mag-isip strategically at kung paano niya i-apply ang cost accounting and cost management methods in strategic management. Because what we want to achieve is nagagamit natin yung mga information na yun to support the strategic position of the entity. Okay? So, ganun po nyo lalawakan yung perspektibo nyo as a manager. It's not just about now the use of cost information for decision making. You will widen your horizons that you need to apply it based on the strategy of the company, based on what strategic management tells you to do. Okay? So, I hope that we are clear on that. Okay? Let's continue. Let me now give you some comparisons of cost and uh, let's first discuss cost based on functional areas. We have manufacturing cost versus non-manufacturing cost. Manufacturing costs are all of your cost that is incurred in the entity's operations on producing products and services. Alam nyo na yan, no? So, kapag ka po sinabing manufacturing cost, lahat po ng ginagamit nating pong cost sa 
pagpo-produce ng product. So, yun po yung direct materials, direct labor, manufacturing overhead. At alam nyo naman na po siguro yan, hindi ba? Direct materials and labor is your prime cost and direct labor and overhead is your um, conversion cost. Okay. Ngayon po, on a perspective of a manager, no, syempre, yung mga yan, alam nyo na yan, eh. Kasi marunong na kayo mag-cost accounting, expert na kayo dyan, eh. Pero, <laughs> ang tanong natin bilang manager, and these are just sample questions, as a manager, ano ba dapat iisipin mo, di ba? Number one, how can we lower down our cost of production? Ayan, di ba? Syempre, ang manufacturing cost, cost of production yan, eh. Paano natin makapapababa? Diba? Kung gusto mong kontrol, eh, anong gagawin natin? Diba? What is the standard labor hours in the production of product A? You are now also setting benchmarks or setting standards para mamaya pwede kang mag-control function, pwede kang mag-variance analysis. Okay? How many units of material X shall we purchase next period to avoid production delay? So, dyan din pumapasok yung ating budgeting, yung planning natin for the next period para tuloy-tuloy at smooth yung operations. E ano naman yun ang manufacturing cost? Basically, ito, alam nyo na rin naman to. More of the entity's operating expenses po kasi ito na hindi related sa production. Pero, syempre, kailangan pa rin gastos ng company to continue operating. no? Uh, expenses like marketing and advertising, yung mga expenses ng opisina, o di po kaya you are incurring expenses due to selling. no? So, hindi naman na siya parte ng manufacturing but you still need to to uh, sacrifice amounts for this because these are also vital points of the entity that you need to consider to continue operating like your operating expenses okay so some guide questions for managers can include what can we do to eliminate other operating expenses that does not add value to the company so baka meron po tayong mga expenses na kailangan reviewin baka hindi naman na dapat gastusin napapagastos pa tayo. Okay? Are there other expenses we need to consider that could help our operations? O baka naman meron tayong kailangan ng paggastusan para makatulong sa atin. Okay? Our office rent increased this month as compared to last month. Ano kayang rason? Okay? So, uh, we really need to scrutinize those cost information para nag add value sa entity. Kasi hindi rin naman biro, bakit nag-increase yung rent natin this month? So, dep, syempre, dapat as a manager, alam mo yun, no? Kung bakit? Hindi yung susundin mo lang kung ano yung sinabi ng financial accounting sa'yo. O, okay, congratulations. <laughs> hindi nga congratulations dyan, eh. Kasi bakit tumakas yung rent nyo? So, dapat alamin natin, no? Para alam natin yung reason and what would be the mitigating factors na maiwasan yung mga pag-increase natin ng cost next period. Okay? We continue with timing of matching with revenues. To rin, alam nyo naman na to, yung ating pong product cost versus period cost. Product cost po is yung ina-assign natin ko sa mga produkto until they are sold. Basically, itong mga product cost na to, ito rin naman yung mga manufacturing cost natin. No? Yun, yan din po yung mga materials labor overhead natin na related dun sa produkto. But what we are now um, talking about is kung paano nyo rin po siya ina-assign based on timing with revenues. No? So, kung ang goods po ay hindi patapos, yung mga cost po na naka-assign sa products natin will become part of your work in process inventory and kung completed na po siya that's good sa goods completed kung completed na po siya or manufactured na siya that will form part po of your finished goods inventory pero kapag ka po kasi hindi pa nabenta yun po yun ay sorry pag nabenta na po siya diretso na po siya the cost assignment for that already is cost of goods sold okay so what are the costs that we include as product cost that in turn becomes inventoryable and then pag nabenta naman po natin nagiging cost of goods sold so kailangan nating reviewin kung ano po ba yung mga pumapasok natin sa product cost because yung mga uh, amount na pumapasok sa atin sa product cost ay ina-assign natin as a work in process inventory as a finished goods inventory and as cost of goods sold so dapat perfect yung loob niyan no baka nakahaluan ng period cost kailangan nating i-check okay Next is yung period cost naman po, parang non-manufacturing cost din ang dating niya, pero in terms of timing with revenues, kaya sa tinawag na period cost is, bukod sa hindi na nga sa parte ng produkto, it's more based on time periods. Payment mo ng operating expenses for rent, administrative salaries, and other general expenses. Okay, so 
is there a proper segregation of payroll as to laborers and payroll as to office staff? So, dapat po, pag payroll to laborers, part yan dapat ng pradakos natin. Tapos, pag payroll as to office staff, dapat part siya ng operating expenses. ba? Diba? Is there a proper segregation of factory facility rent and office rent? So, dapat, yung factory facility rent, nagiging part po dapat yan ng pradakos. Tapos, yung atin pong office rent, nagiging part ng period cost. And then, dapat yun nga po, nagkakaroon ng constant checking and review. Baka po, merong mga prada cost na napapasali sa period cost at merong mga period cost na hindi dapat pero napapasali sa prada cost. Okay? Kasi po, lagi nyo tatandaan, uh, na-assign po kasi as asset and as cost of goods sold yung mga prada cost natin. So, kailangan natin mag-ingat. Diba? Oo. Kasi hindi siya, hindi siya basta-basta eh na asset siya eh, di ba? Uh, yung mga cost na nanalagay natin sa product cost, nagiging asset. Kita nyo naman, nagiging working process inventory, nagiging finished goods inventory, pag hindi pa natin na uh, bibenta, di ba? Eh, ganun sa gaap, di ba? And, uh, kapag ka po nabenta, dun pa lang siya nagiging deduction sa revenue as cost of goods sold. So, so the management should really uh, see to it, no, na tama po yung nare-report natin product cost and period cost and syempre proper segregation and reporting of these items would also help the managers in proper decision making okay as to traceability we have direct cost versus indirect cost okay teka unahan ko na kayo this is not the usual thing that you know that when there is a product, the direct cost is materials and labor, and the indirect cost is your overhead, indirect materials, and indirect labor. Hindi po ito yun, no? Lalawakan na po natin yung perspective nyo. It's now about traceability in the whole entity. Okay, so let me define it now. Direct costs are costs that are traceable to a particular product line, o di po kaya ay segment, department, division, or branch ng company. For example, Assuming that an entity reviews all costs incurred in a specific department. So, ang ilalagay niyong perspective is specific department lang. Isa lang. Okay? All material and labor costs identified in that department ay direct cost. Siyempre, dun sa department na yun, dun nagastos yung materials and labor, direct cost yun. Now, if a certain supervisor is only focused on that uh, department, the salary of that supervisor in that department is still traceable to that department. Kaya po, direct cost pa rin siya. Nasanay kasi kayo na, ay kapag ka salaries ng supervisors, factory janitors, kasama ng mga salary ng mga foreman, salary ng mga ganito, yung mga, yung mga hindi naman related masyado dun sa produkto pero part pa rin ng operations ng manufacturing, ini-indirect nyo agad kasi overhead nga yun. Ngayon, lalawakan nyo na yung traceability na iniisip nyo. If that supervisor is focused on that department, it is still a direct cost in that department because his salary as a supervisor in that department is traceable on that department. So, is it a direct cost on that department? The answer is yes. Is it a direct cost on the product itself? The answer is no. So, titingnan nyo yung levels din kung saan nyo siya itetrace. Ulitin ko yun ha. Yung supervisor at yung pasahod sa kanya, direct cost ba yun dun sa department kung saan siya naka-assign? The answer is yes. Kasi it's a direct cost because dun mo matitrace. Pero ang tanong, yung salary ba ng supervisor na yun, is it a direct cost as to the product itself? Dun na kayo sasagot that the answer is no. It's already an indirect cost on the parlance of the product itself. E ano naman ngayon yung indirect cost? Costs that are not directly traceable to a particular product line, segment, department, division, or branch. Okay? For example, if all product lines has only one production head, so ang ibig sabihin dito, iba-ibang department, tapos isa lang yung production head. The salary of the production head, ang mangyayari dyan, uh, the cost of the salary of the production head, iya-allocate mo na yan sa different departments, sa different product lines. 
So, ang nangyayari, indirect na siya kasi ina-allocate na lang siya. However, the salary of the production head is still a direct cost if we will be talking about the whole production department. So, ang tanong, ikaw ang production head, hawak mo yung buong production department. Kung buong production department ang perspective natin, direct cost siya ng mismong production department. Pero, per department na maa-allocate yung cost ng pasahod ng production head, doon na po siya nagiging indirect kasi inallocate na lang. Okay? So, what we are talking about here is saan nyo po siya matetrace. Basically, kung saan siya traceable, doon siya direct cost. Kung hindi siya traceable doon at inallocate lang, ganun eh, yun na po yun. Indirect cost na siya. Cost controllability. Meron naman po tayo mga cost na controlled or controllable at uncontrolled or uncontrollable. Okay? Cost that can be influenced by the manager on how it will be incurred and can be altered in the short run. So, mamaya natin pag-usapan yung short run na yan. Ang controllable cost po ay the manager has the power and authority to incur cost, to subtract, to add. Okay? Ganon. The manager has the freedom to set levels and decide for the price, for the quality, for the quantity, and even yung paghanap ng supplier <laughs> on that specific perspective of materials and other inputs. Okay? Example po ng mga controllable cost ng isang department, syempre, pwede nilang mapigilan kung gano'ng karami or gano'ng kakonte yung ginagamit nilang direct materials and, and also the uh, direct labor cost and also Um, the, if the entity wants to do donations and contributions, that's also controllable. And then, shall we spend for training? And shall we give bonuses? So, lahat po yan ay controllable. Ano naman po yung uncontrollable? Cost that cannot be influenced by the manager on how it will be incurred. And it can be altered in the long run. Mamaya, pag-usapan natin yung long run na yan. Okay, basically, uncontrollable siya kasi wala kang choice dahil inallocate lang sa department mo <laughs> yung cost na yun. So, tatanggapin mo na lang siya. Okay, or cost incurred, traceable to the specific department but is incurred because it is decided by the higher authority or management. So, although traceable mismo sa'yo, kasi minsan niisip natin kung traceable sa'yo, baka pwede mong pigilan. Kaso, kahit traceable sa'yo, wala ka namang choice <laughs> Uh, kasi it's decided by the higher management. Like for example, depreciation, tiba, or insurance, or allocated overhead and allocated rent. So, wala ka namang choice. Yung rent ng buong facility, i-allocate yan per department. Hindi mo kontrolado yun. Okay? So, ano po yung sinasabing short run and long run? Pag controllable cost po, pwede po natin siyang mapalitan agad-agad. Pwede natin siyang Uh, ma-decide in a snap of a finger. No? Pwede mo agad palitan. O, dagdagan niyang direct materials na ginagamit dyan. Sige, magpa-bonus tayo ng mga empleyado. Short run, pwede. Sangga, sangga nunan lang, pwede. No? Pero kapag ka naman po uncontrollable cost, maa-alter mo lang siya long term. Long run, for example, iniisip ng company na bumili ng bagong building o pag iniisip ng company na bumili ng bagong building hindi mo ma-alter yun basta-basta and you can alter that in the long run pa no? okay bakit long run? kasi yung building syempre may number of years ng life yan tapos i-depreciate mo siya so hindi siya basta-basta na pwede mong ganunin na oy mag-iba tayo ng production facility bukas hindi ganun kadali yun so basically uncontrollable costs are those costs na pwede mo lang i-alter in a long run no long term medyo mahaba-habang usapan medyo malaki-laking desisyon okay yun po yung long run actually the concepts of short run and long run is actually being discussed in economics Okay, so we also have the following costs that would help a manager in decision making. So, ano po ba tong mga cost na yon, de ba? Na nagagamit natin for decision making. First of all is opportunity cost. Okay, these are the benefits for gun in choosing one alternative over the other course of action. Kung yare, meron kang option A and option B. Pag pinili mo si option B. Ano yung sinayang mo kay option A? What are the benefits that you've foregone in choosing option 
uh, B, no? When hindi mo pinansin si option A. Kung dalawa kami naniligaw sa iyo at siya ang pinili mo, ano opportunity cost mo sa akin? Ayaw mo sa CPA na may master's degree o bahala ka sa buhay mo. De joke lang. Okay, pero it, it works that way, no? Um <laughs> na wala tuloy ako. It works that way. Kasi um kung pinili mo siya ano yung nasa ano ano sana yung meron ako na hindi mo mai-enjoy kasi siya ang pinili mo ganon or it works the same way baliktad ako ang pinili mo kung siya sana ang pinili mo ano kaya ang meron siya naman na wala ako <laughs> parang ganon no so um, in choosing one alternative meron kang finor go sa isa and in choosing this alternative, meron ka namang sinayang dun sa isa. Okay. For example, spending for a cheeseburger for 50 pesos a day for the next 10 years would have accumulated to 182,500 worth of savings if you chose to save. So, kung ang pinili mo ay mag-ipon, wala kang cheeseburger every day. Pero kung ang pipiliin mo ay mag cheeseburger every day, wala kang 182,500 after the 10 year period. And on. Okay. Next, an entity has chosen to rent a facility. The payment for the rent could have been spent on other business activities. Kung pinili natin na magbayad ng renta, yung pinambayad natin ng renta, ano pa kaya sana yung iba niyang magandang napuntahan. Okay. So, ganun po yung tinatawag dating excuse me, opportunity cost. No? In accounting, we don't account for opportunity cost. But in economics, they do. Okay. Next po. Differential cost. Ano naman po yung sinasabi nating differential cost? Differences of cost under alternative actions or decisions. Pag ito yung alternative na ginamit natin versus ito yung alternative na ginamit natin, magkano difference nila? Okay? Pwedeng incremental, pataas. Pwedeng decremental, pababa. Okay? For example, in deciding whether to make or buy, bibilin ba natin tong component na to o bibili na lang natin? Ay, sorry. Gagawin ba natin tong component na to or bibili na lang natin sa labas? Okay? Shut down or continue? Should we shut down the operations or we just continue operating kahit medyo loss na? San tayo mas profitable pa din? Parang ganun. Or san mas mababa yung loss natin? Sell as is or process further? Bibenta ko na ba ngayon? Or process ko pa ng mas pagagandahin ko siya? Ganun. Drop a product line or not. So, yung mga ganito pong decisions ay uh, titignan mo yung differences no, of each other. At uh, titignan mo dun sa differences na yun, saan ka may mas advantage. Kung saan ka may mas advantage, yun yung pipiliin mong alternative. And actually, the concept of differential cost is related to another cost in decision making, which is relevant costing naman. No? We actually have a separate chapter that will discuss you differential cost analysis and relevant costing. I, I think that's on bandang finals. Okay? So, yun po. Cost incurred in one alternative that will not be encountered in the other alternative. Relevant lang siya kasi pag ito yung pinili mo, unique siya dun sa alternative na yun. Wala siya dun sa alternative na yun. Ibig sabihin, kung both alternative A and B, meron nung information na yun, eh, relevant na siya. Bakit siya magiging irrelevant? Eh, whether I choose A or B, meron nun eh. Oh, let me give you an example. If the company is choosing between production cycle A na 56 pesos per unit lang yung materials and production cycle B ay 60 units of materials, anong pipiliin nila? Ngayon, whatever production cycle daw po kasi sa A or B na yan, the fixed cost is still 40,000. So, the 56 per unit is relevant syempre kay production cycle A. Yun yung unique ano niya eh yung unique uh, characteristic, di ba? Yung 60 pesos per unit of materials naman is relevant kay B. Yun naman yung unique characteristic niya. Anong gagawin natin doon sa fixed cost na 40,000? Eh, wh whatever you choose eh. Pro uh, production cycle A, production cycle B, wala. Pareho siya ng fixed cost. So, yung 40,000 mo, irrelevant siya. Kasi kahit anong piliin mo, pareho lang na 40,000 yung fixed cost mo. 
Okay? So, kunyari, tatanungin kayo. Kung gusto ng company maging cost leader, anong pipiliin nila? Production cycle A or B? Siyempre si A kasi mas mababa ang materials mo dyan. ba? Diba? Kung gusto ng company ang strategy nila maging uh, unique ang products, product differentiation, pero medyo mahal nga lang yung mabibili nilang piyesa para doon. Or di doon sila sa production cycle B, 60 pesos per unit, if that would give them product differentiation. Pero kung ang tanong ay kailangan natin ng production cycle na ano na ang fixed cost mababa lang. Eh parang medyo irrelevant namang tignan nyo fixed cost kasi wala ka naman choice eh. Either production A or B, your fixed cost is 40,000. It's early. It's irrelevant in the decision. Because whatever you choose, it's just the same. Okay. So, guys, always try to be relevant. <laughs> okay. We continue with marginal cost. Ang marginal cost po kasi na tawag dito <laughs> na konsepto ay uh, pang economics po talaga ito, no? Pero it helps managers determine the quantity na pinaka efficient kang mag-produce. You can achieve efficiency. Guys, as you know, mas marami kang i-produce, mas maraming kakain ng fixed cost mo. So, yung fixed cost mo, mas bumababa per unit, ba? Diba? Pag marami kang pinroduce, yung fixed cost mo, mas maraming makocover. Parang ganun yung gustong puntuhin ng marginal cost, ba? Diba? So, pag marginal cost kasi, how much is the extra cost if another unit is produce natin? Ngayon nga lang, ang gusto nating ma-achieve, syempre, is yung marginal cost natin. Ay, ano, um, para bang andating, eh, malalaman mo sa marginal cost, yung number of items or number of units na ikaw ay pinaka-efficient. So, you will be using a uh, technique in economics which is a uh, change in cost over change in quantity. So, let's say, for example, the change in cost is 564 minus 500 that's 64 and then change in quantity 700 over 500 200 your marginal cost is 0.32 okay so yun po yung extra cost na na incur in uh, uh, one uh, unit no nung uh, 500 going to 700 ka diyan mo malalaman sa marginal cost kung ikaw po ba ay efficient kasi baka marami naman palang units na pwedeng ma-accommodate dun sa production process mo why not uh, focus on producing uh, at a level na magiging efficient ka okay in relation to that, uh, meron po tayong tinatawag din na average cost per unit. So, that's basically your total cost, which is fixed cost plus variable cost total, divided by the number of units you manufactured. Let me give you an example. If the variable cost per unit is 40 and fixed cost is 5, at 1,000 units, your total variable cost is 40 times 1,000, 40,000. At 2,000 units, 2,000 times 40 is 80,000. And at 3,000 units, 40 times 3,000 is 120,000. However, your fixed cost would still be the same. Get the total cost. For 1,000, we have 45,000, 2,085, and 3,125. Now, you divide your total cost to the number of units. So, 45,000 divided by 1,000, that's 45. But at 2,000 units, it only becomes 42.5. And at 3,000 units, it only becomes 41.67. What might be the reason for that? Mas marami kang pinoproduce, mas maraming kumakain ng total fixed cost. That's why your average cost per unit goes down and down and down. Okay? So, ganun po yun. Okay. Next is sunk cost. Ayan. Cost that has been or ha uh, on your already incurred that will not affect future cost since they are already paid for or incurred and ano mang gawin mong decision in the future di mo na siya maibabalik okay hindi mo na siya hindi mo na siya dapat panghinayangan kasi nagastos mo na at magdesisyon ka man ng kung ano man ngayon wala na hindi mo na mababalik a company spends ten thousand dollars training its employees to use a new uh, ERP system. Okay? Enterprise resource planning. The software turns out to be heavily confusing and unreliable. So, wala na training na yung mga tao. Tapos, nung training yung mga tao, doon nila nalaman, palyado, palpak. No? The senior management team wants to discontinue the use of the new ERP system. 
the $10,000 spent to train employees is already a sunk cost kasi desisyonan mo man na ituloy yan o hindi na, wala na, na goodbye ka na dun sa $10,000. So, yung, cost, yung sunk cost mo, irrelevant na siya dun sa decision mo kung itutuloy mo pa ba siya o hindi. Kasi ituloy mo man o hindi, nagastos mo na. Kaya yung mga ginastos nyo sa ex nyo, ang tawag dun, sunk cost na. At kahit makipagbalikan sila sa inyo o balikan nyo sila, yung mga dati nyong ginastos sa kanila, hindi na yun mababalik sa inyo. Dahil ang tawag dun, sunk cost na. And it's irrelevant on the new decisions that you will be making. Sana naiintindihan nyo. <laughs> okay. And then lastly, we have out-of-pocket cost. No? Uh, basically, ano lang yan. Pag na-incur mo yung expense na yun, gagastos ka talaga. <laughs> Ganun. The wages of a person setting up a machine for a new production run are an out-of-pocket cost. Kasi syempre magbabayad ka ng sahaw dun sa tao na set up ng machine. Pero, yung cost daw po of the lost opportunity na sana po ay eh, ikaw ay kumikita during the setup time, hindi po yun out of pocket cost kasi ang tawag po doon opportunity cost po. Pag sinabi pong out of pocket cost, may gastos ka talang lang, talagang mangyayari. May na-incur kang something, so pabayaran mo. Example, payment of rent, wages, or interest. Yun po yung sinasabi natin, out of pocket cost. So basically, pagka binayaran mo naman talaga ng cash, cash yung expense na yun, out of pocket cost po talaga yun. Okay, so tapos na po tayo sa mga costs na ginagamit natin for decision making and we can continue now with another uh, part of our lesson which is cost behavior. Now, the, the these last slides, no, these succeeding slides are actually not new to you already because uh, these uh, points are already discussed with you sa inyo pong uh, uh, cost accounting and control class. So, basically, this is just a review and then uh, we will just be reiterating how it affects strategic cost management and how will you be able to use this information as a manager. Okay, so when we say cost behavior, this, this is how a cost will respond according to changes in the production process or level of activity. So based on this level of activity, what will happen to this kind of cost? Based on this level of activity, what will happen to this kind of cost naman? Okay, so yung cost, yan yung cost behavior na dapat yung tignan because a manager should be able to determine which costs are directly proportional with what is happening in the operation and what costs are, whether we increase or decrease operations, it stays the same because it will help them in decision making, in planning and in budgeting okay so let's talk about the concept of relevant range the relevant range is the range of production activity that presents the entity's normal normal operating levels where relationships of cost behaviors are deemed acceptable there are no outliers walang sobra sobra walang kulang kulang and uh, at that point nagkakaroon po ng uh, uh, meet up yung approximation ng cost ng isang accountant versus sa uh, cost na iniisip ng isang economist. Yun po yung ano eh, relevant range. The relevant range in its simplest sense is actually the level of uh, activity where all of your cost relationships are valid. Okay? Walang sumusobra, walang kumukulang, at wala pong nagiging outliers. Yun po yung tinatawag nating relevant range. Now, ito po ay hindi na bago sa inyo, so let's just talk about these cost behaviors. We have the variable cost and the fixed cost. Variable costs are costs that change as the quantity of goods uh, produced changes. The total amount of variable cost is syempre nakadepende sa level ng production. So, pag variable cost po, when you produce zero, yung variable cost mo magsi-zero din. But when you produce 100,000 units, oh, you will have a variable cost that is equivalent dun sa pin-reduce mong 100,000 units. So, the higher po yung production, higher yung variable cost mo. Best examples po natin is yung direct materials and yung direct labor natin per hour. 
fix cost naman po, kahit anong level of production mo, gumawa ka o hindi, wala, may ma-incur ka talagang cost dyan. Whether you produce zero or 100,000 units, you still need to pay the rent of the factory facility that you are renting. Whether you produce zero or 100,000 units, you will still incur depreciation of the factory equipment. And you, you have nothing to, to control on that. Kasi yung fixed cost na yan, magproduce ka o hindi, maiincur mo ang rent, maiincur mo ang depreciation. Okay? So, I, I know that alam niyo naman na ito. No? Uh, kapag ka po variable cost, it is constant on a per unit basis and it varies when presented as a total. Kabalik na naman po pag fixed cost, it's constant when presented as a total but it varies on a per unit basis. So for example, if the normal manufacturing process of the entity or their relevant range is 5,000 to 7,000 units of goods with a variable cost per unit of 20 and 15,000 pesos ng fixed cost, papakita ko sa inyo yung kanilang cost behavior. Tinan yung mabuti. Pag variable cost natin na 20 pesos per unit, at 5,000 units, 100,000. At 6,000 units, 120,000. At 7,000 units, 140,000. Pero tinan nyo mabuti. It's, a, it's constant on a per unit basis. Whatever it is, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, your variable cost per unit would still be 20. However, it varies when it will be presented as a total. No? So, pag 5,000 na, ang total variable cost mo, 100,000. Pero pag 7,000, 140,000 na. And ang behavior niya, habang tumataas ang number of units produced, ang total variable cost mo, tumataas din. Okay? Kapag ka naman po fixed cost, it's constant when presented as a total. Whatever level of production, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, ang may incur mo pa rin pong fixed cost, 15,000. Pero, it now varies on a per unit basis. Pag 5,000 units lang pinroduce mo, per unit, 3 pesos. Pag 6,000 lang pinroduce, pero pag 6,000 na yung pinroduce mo, 250 na lang siya. Pag 7,000, 2.14 na siya. Bakit po bumababa ang fixed cost per unit pag tumataas ang production? Kasi mas maraming units ang kumakain ng fixed cost. So bumababa yung fixed cost per unit. And another thing in fixed cost is that pag tumataas ang production, ang fixed cost per unit, pababa po siya. Inverse naman po ang kanilang relationship. Okay. Uh, pasok lang natin itong concept no ng cost equation na y is equals to a plus bx no ang total cost daw po which is represented by y is equal po sa ating total fixed cost uh, you can present it as a total kasi whatever level of activity hindi magbabago yan within the relevant range di ba and then you add po yung variable cost per unit natin to the number of units of activity or the volume of activity or kung ilan po yung iyong pinroduce. Okay? So, solve natin sandali itong uh, problem na ito. How much is the total cost to manufacture products with a variable manufacturing cost per unit of 25 pesos, din ang fixed cost po 40,000 at the following production levels, 2,457,250. So, for letter A, ganito lang po. Y is equals to A plus BX, so your fixed cost is 40,000 plus 25 variable cost per unit multiplied by 2,000 units. So, yung iyong total variable cost is 50,000 plus fixed cost of 40, your total cost at 2,000 units is 90,000. Okay, ganun lang po siya. So, sa letter B naman po ay uh, 40,000 yung fixed cost. 25, 25 naman po yung variable cost per unit natin. Multiply nyo po sa 4,500 units. Your total variable cost is 112,500 plus your fixed cost of 40,000. That is 152,500. Sige nga po, pause the video if you need more time to think and solve. Kayo naman po ang mag-solve para po dun sa 7,250 units. Then I will be revealing the answer. Assuming that you have already solved for that, the answer for letter C is 221,250. Okay, so pwede pong makatulong sa inyo yung uh, equation na yan para mas madali po para sa inyo na mag-compute ng total cost. Okay, and later on, i-expound po natin yung uh, formula na yan na magagamit din po natin mamaya. Okay? 
Meron din po tayong tinatawag na mixed cost and step cost. Pag mixed cost naman po, pareho po siya may variable tsaka fixed component. So, sa unang tingin, hindi mo siya madedetermine <laughs> kung variable ba siya or fixed kasi magkahalo na nga siya sa loob. Okay? So, pwede po siyang utilities and maintenance cost na meron po siyang base amount na fixed pero habang umaandar din yung activity, nagkakaroon ng pagtaas. Okay? Pag step cost naman po is para siya talagang hagdan pag ginraf mo. Kasi, uh, constant on a certain level pero biglang aangat pag may nagbago. No? For example, salaries and commissions of agents that goes higher with different ranges of activity like people or customer serve. So for example, your commission is 1,000 pesos if you have served 1 to 50 customers. But your commission is already 2,000 pesos if you will be serving 51 to 100 customers. So at that point, kung titignan mong mabuti, at 1 to 50 customers, naka-fix siya na 1,000 yung commission. Pero biglang naging variable kasi nung nag-51, 2,000 na. Pero mag-fix na naman siya uli kasi at 51 to 100, 2,000 na. No? O, tuloy natin, 101 to 150, 3,000 na yung kanyang koso. So parang ang dating, habang nandun ka sa range, fix bigla magiging variable kasi tataas no then fix na naman siya doon sa range na yon tas tataas na naman uli yun yung sinasabi nating step cost okay ngayon eh ito na yung medyo computational part ng ating uh, discussion for today yung pagse-separate po natin ng ating pong uh, mix cost no it might be difficult for managers to be able to plan, control, or make a decision when the set of cost information has mixed costs. So, unang tingin, di mo talaga siya madedetermine kasi magkahalo. Therefore, it will be helpful in managerial decision making to be able to see both the variable and fixed cost component in a set of observations. Therefore, there are three methods to be employed in separating mixed costs. You can either use HILO method, LSRM, or your scatter diagram. We will be solving your HILO method in least squared regression, but for scatter diagram, because that is a bit mathematical, and I think this is uh, part of um, statistics yata ito, if I'm not mistaken. Kasi medyo parang ginagamit ito sa research, mga correlation, correlation na yan eh. Minsan parang gano'n. So, uh, I think um, we'll just be presenting the an introduction to you of scatter diagram, but we will not be requiring you to really compute that. At least, maano nyo lang, ma... tao dito? Ma-appreciate. <laughs> Ma-appreciate nyo lang siya. Okay. Sige. Hilo method tayo. Dion Company builds tabletop replicas of some of the most famous tourist attractions in Seoul. The company is highly automated where maintenance cost shows as a significant expense. The owner decided to use machine R's as the basis of predicting maintenance costs and has gathered the following data for the eight following weekly operations. So we have eight weeks po ng ating uh, observations. Meron po tayong specific machine hours and yung maintenance cost based on those machine hours. Using the high-low method, you determine the variable cost per unit, the fixed cost in total, and magkano po kaya ang expected nating maintenance cost kung 8,200 ang ating machine hours. Credits to Professor Franklin T. Agamata on his textbook, Management Advisory Services, for this problem. Okay, ganito gagawin natin mga kapatid pag high-low method. Step 1. Determine the highest and lowest activity. And kung ano po yung highest and lowest activity, ano yung cost na associated sa kanila. Okay? So, ganito po yun. Kung titignan nyo mabuti, ang highest activity po natin ay nasa 9,000. At yung cost niya is 24,800. Ang lowest naman po natin is 3,000. At ang maintenance cost naman po niya, 9.8. Take note mo na yan pag nakuha mo na yung highest and lowest activity at yung cost na related sa kanila. Kasi gagamitin natin siya sa step 2 which is kukunin na po natin yung variable cost per unit. Gagamitin po natin yung formula na cost at highest activity minus cost at lowest activity divided by highest activity over, ah sorry, over highest activity minus lowest activity. So ganito po siya. 
Your cost at highest activity is 9,000, so 24,800. Tapos, cost at lowest activity po is 3,098. Then, your highest activity is 9, lowest activity is 3. So, perform the mathematics. 15,000 divided by 6,000 machine hours, your variable cost per unit is 250 per machine hour. Kung meron ka na ngayong variable cost per unit, it's now the time that you get the fixed cost per unit. So, obtain the total fixed cost by removing the variable cost component in the total cost. So, ganito po siya. Kunin mo yung total cost at highest activity, which is 24,800, and in lowest activity is 9,800. Ngayon, ang gagawin mo, Iisipin mo ulit, paano po ba ang, uh, ang ating ginagawa kapag uh, variable cost? ba diba? Yung variable cost per unit, multiply natin sa level of activity. So, yun po yung magiging variable cost component niya. In the high, it's 9,000 machine hours at 250. So, 22,500 po yun. In the low, 3,000 naman po times 250,75. Tapos, you just deduct. Kung ang total cost ay 24,800 at ang variable cost component ay 22,500, edi ang fixed cost niya 2,3. Sa lowest naman po, 9,800, ang variable cost component niya 7,500, ang fixed cost niya 2,3. You know that you calculated it correctly when the fixed cost, whether at highest activity or lowest activity, is the same. And why is it the same? Because it is fixed cost. Okay? So, ganun po yun. Ngayon, sagutin natin yung tanong na magkano po ang maintenance cost at 8,200 machine hours? Oh, madali na lang yan. Gagamitan mo lang nito Kasi meron ka ng fixed cost na 2,300. Meron ka ng variable cost per unit na 2.5. O di multiply mo lang yung variable cost per unit mo na 2.5 sa 8,200 which is 25 plus the fixed cost of 2,3. So, the estimated maintenance cost kung sakaling 8,200 machine hours po siya, 22,800. How will we how will we be applying this high low method in in a managerial decision making perspective? The manager wants to determine what's really happening with our maintenance cost. So kinuha niya yung eight weeks na observation, de ba? Kaso nako, it's hard for me to to understand this because. Uh, there are fluctuations. There are different amounts, and I don't know the fixed and the variable components here. So when you know the fixed and variable components, it's it will much uh, more be easier for the manager to determine what if I have nine thousand machine hours next week. What if I have fifteen thousand machine hours next week? At least I have an estimation because I know the variable cost component. And I know the fixed cost component. So high-low method will not just teach you how to get the variable cost component or the fixed cost component. In a managerial perspective, you know how to estimate uh, overhead because you know the variable cost component and the fixed cost component. So you are able to plan for it. What is my uh, expected level? Of maintenance cost, if I will just be working, or the the operations will just be working at 1,000 hours, you can still get an answer for that because you have your variable cost, you have your fixed cost with you. Okay. Derecho naman po tayo ng LSRM or the least squares regression method, and we use the same problem. Let's compute for the variable cost per unit and the total fixed cost using this method. Okay. Gento po gagawin natin, medyo mahaba. Uh, prepare a table calculating x, y, x, y, and x squared. Ganto po siya. X po yung number ng hours. Hindi po x yung galit mo. Hindi yun. Okay? X po yung number of <laughs> number of hours, yung machine hours, yung activity. Y naman po will represent your total cost. Gagawa ka ng table na yung multiply mo uh, pare yung x dun sa y para maka x y ka di ba pare puta yung bgc joke okay tapos ang gagawin mo naman is x squared naman po yung pang apat na column no so edi x squared x times x o yun yun okay so you perform the mathematics if you have access to Microsoft Excel that would be easier for you but if you will be doing it on a face to face examination good luck complete mo isa isa yan okay so you get the sum no of all of your x 
ilang ba yung ex mo? <laughs> and then, all of your y, and then yung sum din po ng xy at saka ng x squared mo. Okay? Because you will be using all of these summations later in your formulas. Okay? Where n is equals to 8. Ano po yung ibig sabihin ng n is equals to 8? The number of observations that we have in this analysis is 8 weeks. Kaya po, n is equals to 8. O, ganito gagawin natin next. Puro kalakuhan ako today, ha? Okay, step 2 is to substitute the computed amounts in the following equation to get variable cost per unit. So, coming from y is equals to a plus bx, you will transform it into this, which is the summation of y is equals to n multiplied by a plus b multiplied by the summation of x. And then, uh, the summation of xy is equals to the summation of x multiplied by a plus b mu multiplied by the summation of x squared. Para po madali nyong maintindihan, hindi po ito letter E, summation po yan, no? Greek alphabet po yan. Magagalit po yung mga math mathematics teachers natin pag tinawag po natin letter E yan. Kasi hindi po yan E, no? Uh, Greek alphabet po yan for summation na ginagamit natin. Pero, kung gusto nyo mabilis na maalala yung formula na hindi na kayo magme-memorize nung buong sinabi kong equation kanina na summation of y is equals to n multiplied by a, it's hard, ba So, ang gagawin natin, kakanta tayo, no? Ganito po. Uh, again, math teachers, forgive us for calling this letter E para lang po ito makabisado namin ng maayos. Okay? So, yabex, a na bex, x, c, x, bex, squared. Yabex, a na bex, x c x sub x squared ya bex a na bex x c x sub x squared ya bex a na bex x c x sub x squared yun na yun oh. di, di, syempre na LSS ka na diba oh. kahit hindi mo siya kabisado na uh, the summation of y is equals to n multiplied by a o oh, kantayin mo lang ya bex a na bex x c x sub x squared ya bex a na bex x c x sub x squared o di kabisado mo na yung formula ngayon gagamitin natin to kasi we will be substituting the summations that we got kanina in these equations okay so gamitin na natin to ito po yung mga summations natin kanina ito po yun papasok natin siya dito so gagawa po tayo ng system of linear equations into unknown. So balik po kayo sa algebra kung nakalimutan nyo na yun. System of linear equations into unknowns. Okay, so ganito po yan. Sir, paano nangyari yan? O, ito, hinahinay. Okay, una. Summation of y, 118500, ito po yun. n multiplied by a, n is 8, multiplied by a, plus b, Multiplied by summation of x. Summation of x is 46.5. So, 46.5b. Second equation mo, summation of xy, 756.350. Tapos, summation of x, 46.5 multiplied by a. Plus, b multiplied by summation of x squared. Summation of x squared, 301.750 multiplied by b. Okay. We'll be solving for a and b. No? Um, again, this is summation, ah, sorry, system of linear equations in two unknowns. O, ganito po, gagawin nyo. Hindi ko na alam po anong tawag nito sa math, pero ganito yung gagawin yung technique. Yung 46.5, lalagay mo dito sa taas, pero in a negative mo. Math teachers, please help me. I, I forgot kung ano pong tawag dito sa technique na to. Tapos yung 8, bababa mo dito, pero positive pa din. Tsaka mo siya multiply. So, mangyayari, ganito na. Negative 46.5 times 118.500, ito na, na po yun. Negative 46.5 times 8a, ito na po yun. Negative 46.5 times 46.5, ito po yun. Tapos sundin nyo na lang yung mga positive-negative rules dyan. Okay? Algebra to eh. So, di man ako math teacher. So, balikan nyo yung galing nyo sa algebra dyan. Okay? Tapos 8 multiplied by this gives you this. 8 multiplied by this gives you this and 8 multiplied by this gives you this okay kasi ang goal natin mabura na si A sa mundo dito no para makuha natin yung variable cost per unit which is represented by B di ba so ang gagawin natin magka-cancel out po itong A so matitira yung mga members na B na lang no so ganito na po siya 5510250 
tas naka negative so pa minus yan 605800 ito na po yon 540 550 is equals to yung difference naman po nitong dalawang to 251750b divide both sides by 251750 so you will get b of 2.15 Sir, ano ibig sabihin ng B is equal to 2.15? Your variable cost per unit is 2.15. So, you already have your variable cost per unit. You're now ready to get your fixed cost per unit. Okay, so pag fixed cost per unit po, ganito po. Substitute B to any equation to get A. Ganito lang. So, ang B po natin is 2.15. Doon tayo sa mas madali. Alin dyan ang gusto nyo gamitin natin? Si 118 o si 756. Siyempre, dito na tayo sa mas madali. Huwag na natin pahirapan yung mga sarili natin. Kasi nahirapan ka na nga maganap ng jowa. Pati ba naman dito? Mahirapan ka pa, diba? So, 118500 is equals to 8A plus 46500B. You just substitute your B na 2.15 kasi it's available na. So, 118500 is equals to 8A plus 46.5 multiplied by B. So, ganito na po yung mangyayari. 118500 is equals to 8A plus 99975. Oh, you just do the transpositions to get A. So, ganito na po yung mangyayari. So, labas mo si 8A sa kabila, magiging negative 8A. Tapos, pasok mo sa kabila si 118500, kaya naging negative. 99975 stays at positive kasi naiwan siya doon. Negative 8A is equals to negative uh, 18,525. Divide both sides by 8 to get A. A is equals to 2,315.63. Ano po yung A? Ano po ibig sabihin niyan? That is your total fixed cost. Okay, so kung papansin ninyong mabuti pag kinompare natin under the high-low method 2.5. Yung ating variable cost per unit. Pag fixed cost naman po, 2.3. Na nag-least ko yung regression tayo. 2.15 tapos total fixed cost. 2315.63. So, you know you're correct when medyo magkalapit sila. Okay. The third one that I will be presenting you is yung tinatawag po natin na scatter diagram but I used an explanation from explained.com accounting. So, uh, credits po sa gumawa ng discussion na ito from explained.com. Uh, I will just be showing this to you as uh, familiarization but not really expecting you to, to do this because this is a bit mathematical and uh, we are not really expected to be mathematics experts in, in terms of these items because what we want to do is more of decision making. Either way, I'll be presenting it to you. Okay. The scatter diagram method is a graphical technique of separating fixed and variable components of mixed cost by plotting the activity level along the x-axis. So, dapat daw po, inandito sa x-axis ay mga activities, activity level, and then y-axis naman po natin yung mga total cost. No? So, ang features po niyan, nagkakaroon daw po ng tinatawag nating regression line based po sa visual inspection. So, visual inspection lang po kasi yung ginagamit. No? The line thus drawn is used to, the est to estimate the total fixed cost and variable cost per unit. So, kung ano mam daw po yung nandito sa loob nito, <laughs> dyan mo hugutin kung paano yung variable cost and fixed cost. Okay? The point where the line intercepts y-axis, ito po yun, is the fixed cost and the slope of the line, meron po tayong formula ng slope, di ba? y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So, medyo algebraic, medyo mathematical, di ba? Yun naman daw po yung nagre-represent ng variable cost per unit. Since the visual in inspection does not involve any mathematical testing, this should be applied with great care. Kasi, bukod sa visual lang siya, ang sabi, wala namang testing masyado mathematically. No, kung, kung tama ba yung pagkakasulat mo ng linya dun sa scatter diagram. Kasi po, ang scatter diagram ay titignan mo dun sa diagram. Dun, uh, parang magdodrawing ka ng straight line dun sa mga dots na may pinakamaraming area na merong dots. Parang ganun po kasi siya. No? Kasi parang that is the valid ranges of activity eh, no? na nangyayari. Tsaka masyado drawing ng line. Parang ganun. 
Okay, so explain that comma as a wonderful problem for that, no? Pero hindi naman natin talaga siya iisa-isahin talaga kung paano i-solve. I just want you to understand how it happens, no? So, meron naman po tayong number of units at saka factory overhead naman po yung pinag-uusapan natin dito. So, paano po kaya natin gagawin? Ang step 1 po natin is plotting and then pag na-plot mo na po siya, paano bang plotting kasi Ang sabi natin, di ba, the cost is in the y-axis, the number of units in the x-axis. So, gagawin mo lang siyang uh, plotting sa Cartesian plane. This is the x, this is the y, ganon. And then, kapag ka na-plot mo na siya, do-drawing ka ng regression line, tsaka mo makukuha yung fixed cost, tsaka variable cost. Ang variable cost po, ang gagamitin mong formula, yung slope, no? y2 minus y1 is equals to, ay, sorry, divided by x2 minus x1. Okay, so just to give you an idea on how to do it, ganito po siya. No? So, kung ano po itong, kunyari, gawin lang natin yung month 1. 1,520 units, so that's yung X. So, pupunta ka, so banda dito siya, nandito yung 1,520 pala, sorry, nandito pala yon <laughs> 1,520 units, ito po yun. Tapos, 36,375, so mga bandang nandito po yung 36,000, mga kapatid. So, ito yung 35. So, ito yung mga 36,375. Yan po yung plotting ng month 1. So, lahat ng months 1 to 8, yun ang gagawin mo dyan. So, month 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Ito po lahat yun, no? Tsaka ngayon, mag, magdodrawing ng line. No? Kaya nga po, ano siya eh, medyo kailangan maingat ka kasi visual lang yung gagawitin mong pang line. Eh, paano kung mamali ka ng line? Di ba? Di mali na agad. Ganon po siya. Okay. Kung saan daw po tatama yung pinakadulo nung line, yun daw po yung start ng fixed cost mo. Parang ganon, no? So, your fixed cost is in the y-intercept of approximately 18,000. And then, to compute daw po for your variable cost, magsa-start na dito. So, ang iyong uh, x1, y1, x1 is 0, y1 is 18,000, tapos, x1, uh, X2 is 3,500. Ito po yun. Y2 is yung bandang nandito po, which is 68,000. So, ang gagawin mo po is Y2, 68,000 minus Y1 na 18,000 divided by X, uh, X2 na 35 minus 0 na X1. Then, you just divide that. Lalabas po yung variable cost per unit. 14.29. O, ganun po. So, ganun po gawin yung ating tinatawag na scatter diagram. So, ang um, ang main ano po niya feature is magpa-plot ka sa Cartesian plane nung ating mga activities na i-analyze. Ayun. Then you just do the step-by-step -step method that I presented you. But uh, you are not really expected to to really be experts on that kasi medyo mathematical na po 'yan, no? And uh, as manager, your focus is decision making, not how to do the math. Okay, so I hope that uh, you were able to understand our discussion for this session. And our next lesson is absorption versus variable costing. Again, please like, share, and subscribe to Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons PH and hit the notification bell button. Comment down your questions, suggestions, and reactions. This has been Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons PH. To God be all the glory, honor, and praise. Thank you and have a great day. Sarangeo. But